On this episode of The Sequence, I will show you how to use drum brakes. The Sequence. What is going on, people? I'm back at it again. I haven't been at it for a while. We got another episode of The Sequence here, so I wanna talk about a little bit of history before I get into the tutorial itself. So what is a drum break? Well, it's a drum solo. Some drum solos could either be up to one bar or even less than a bar, but it, it could be a unique drum solo without any instrumentation behind it, and it's called a drum break. But break beats altogether is a solo of an instrument, and many people use this to create loops. And how they would do that before hip hop became a thing, they would take doubles of records in the club and they would repeatedly play a drum break. And that technique came from Zulu Nation, AKA Sosonic Force, AKA African Bambata, and they would try to find doubles of records. This technique carried over to drum samplers once they were birthed, and then it became a thing in hip hop and drum and bass. So yeah, it's a lot of history behind that. Hopefully I explained it right to you guys. Let me know in the comment section if I messed up or not. Also, I'll probably cover my favorite drum break records and different places where you can get drum breaks from. So let's go ahead and hop into this tutorial. So the drum break I'm using in this video is actually from a compilation of drum breaks and it's called King Cake Breaks. So I have a link in the description box to that but I'll talk more about drum breaks and where you can get them from and all that stuff in another video. So let's go ahead and put this on the turntable and get things popping and sample it. It's a nice record here, got it, yeah. Louisiana, the people. I think that's the one right there. So I already did a tutorial on how to sample and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that I set my threshold. So you can set your threshold. You also can add an effect if you want to affect the sample as it is going into the sampler itself, which is right here. And also you can choose to send everything to a pad by pad tap or pad hold but we're gonna do it the old school way. Make sure that you have the time over here set. If you have to set the time, set the time if you want a certain amount, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 20 seconds and arm it and, pre and press play. And I'm good with that. Uh, you can go ahead and name your sample if you have any plans to do that uh, or just to keep the sample so you can keep it organized so it's not just a new sample. Um, I'm just going to name this uh, King Cake. And then I'm going to just type in the groove number, which is Groove 7. And now I'm going to go into Sample Edit. Now the groove, let's go ahead and play it. Stop it. I'm actually good with all this information that I got from these drums, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to Chop. Now, we're gonna use a feature called Threshold Chop, which is going to uh, lay out all the slices through via the threshold. And now, let's go ahead and play it. Uh, one thing that you'll notice, though, when I'm messing with this right here, is that it's mono, it's like legato. So all that is fine for right now, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because once we go shift and convert, uh, then we're going to uh, make this into a new drum program using slices, non-destructive slices. So that means that I can go back and adjust the slices if I don't like them. So I'm gonna go hit do it, and now when I go back to main, it is right here under this program. So make sure that you're on the drum program, and then select your cake groove seven. Now the next thing you're gonna do, and it's gonna be different on the MPC one and the MPC X, 
And what I'm going to do is go into my menu. I'm going to hold menu if you have the MPC Live 2 or 1 and then press program edit. Uh, on the MPC 1, you have an individual button that says program edit. So you can just click that. Lucky you guys. Now, instead of having mono poly, I'm going to switch it to poly. So now I can. The other thing I want to show you about this is because we're going to want to make some adjustments to maybe the hi-hat over here or even the kick. Or whatever you want. So now what we're going to do here is go to filter and envelope and seeing that we're in program edit. I can adjust uh, I can adjust the uh, envelopes. So I'm going to go to amp envelope and select this right here, which is a H D S. Now that's going to give me access to the sustain and make sure that your Q link is on the first dot. So Q link on the first dot. And now we're going to adjust the sustain on that sound. Now I'm going to go play the other sounds because the other sounds aren't affected by that. Just that. Now I'm going to adjust uh, the decay. You're basically, you're, you're doing some sound design. I, I'll probably mess with the attack a little bit. I'm not going to mess with hold, but I, you know, I just have mess with the decay. So I have like a, a hi hat that is more functional for me. Uh, you also can uh, go into different cue links. You can go over here and filter the kick. So a la Dilla or, you know, however you like it, you can change the filter type and you got these cue links over here. I am in 2.8, by the way, I forgot to mention that, uh, but, that's where uh, in 2.8, basically, you can see what your cue links are doing, but uh, you can see it on the screen here, too. So I'm messing with the cutoff. I can mess with the envelope, too, as well. The mount on the filter envelope. And now you can go also go into that part of that and affect that kick. And I can go into semitones here. I'm in samples right now. I can adjust the hat. I'm probably adjust that. Adjust the, uh, and I'll just do uh, some adjustments to other stuff as well, so that you can see that. So I just mess with this, mess with this snare right here. Now I have something totally different from what I've just recorded. Uh, and you can go a little deeper than that. Uh, other things I want to show you about this that is very unique is that I can add effects too as well. So if I like the way that snare hits, but I might want to add, so I don't, I don't know, some type of lo-fi, I can go into, you know, a different setting over here. I can go into harmonics here and select air lo-fi and go in there and then affect the, the drum a bit, change the bit depth, change the sample rate. Uh, and I could do exactly the same for uh, the kick. I can go into to the kick here. I can go, maybe I want to add distortion. Maybe not that much distortion. I can go into my cue links, of course, and make sure to be mindful of that. Add drive. Now, let's go ahead and lay out a beat. Let's go. Go ahead and get that uh the drum right. All right. 
now we got it nice and janky. Let's uh, check out. Now I can go. Uh, I can go and find some other stuff. And this this kid I just made. Like I like that flim here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go back over into program, edit, and then I'm gonna adjust that. I'm gonna go to my cue link, of course, and then uh, add a sustain. And we're going to adjust it as much as humanly possible. Maybe uh, some attack. And I can go over here to the sample. Let's try it out with the groove real quick. Maybe not. <laughs> Let's try this part. Though. Oh yeah, so that actually will work. So I'm gonna go and I can go in the main. I don't, I don't need to leave the program edit window, but you know, just go ahead and overdub and play start. Actually, I don't have to go on back, go right into program edit again. We're gonna add an, a, a nice little reverb on it, and then we're gonna we're not gonna drown it, but go over here to Q link, I'm messing with the Q link here. Last but not least, uh, once you have uh, made a drum kit out of something, uh, of course you can save it as a program. So make sure that you save it on the program. I highly recommend saving it on your SD card. Uh, I actually like this, this uh, drum kit that I created from that drum break. Uh, so what I will do is I will name it 
uh, I don't know, like hip hop king, something king ish. And from here, I'll just go over here to the pencil, uh, sign, and then I will choose save current program. Uh, save current program. I'm gonna go over here to my SD card slot, go into my folder that I have dedicated to my drum programs, and then I will save it over here. Uh, I'm gonna put hip hop kit. That's what I meant to do. So I'm gonna change the name of it before I save it, do it. And now I'm gonna save it in there. Boom. And that's all you gotta do. And we got a groove. Let's hear it again. So tell me how you feel about this video. I definitely want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Was this very helpful to you? Did I kind of spread some enlightenment about drum breaks and how you could use them in the Kai samplers because the MPC-1, the Live and X could utilize drum breaks in many different ways. And you can also save them as drum kits for later on, just in case there are drum breaks that you really, really enjoy. And then you can mangle them up and do anything that you want as you've seen. So let me know in the comment section uh, what other topics that you want me to cover and I'll cover them on this channel.